Hello, my front end friends. I have three lines of code that I think you should definitely add to your CSS reset, or three selectors anyway, maybe a little bit more than three specific lines of code. And the first one is this one, which I guess, as I said, is more than one line, though you could make that selector one line if you really wanted to. Uh, but basically, it's the same text wrap balance on all of your headings. So what that's going to do is you can see my quick tips for my CSS reset there. If I turn that off, it's not going to be balanced out as much. We have this one word that's coming there. I could even do this and, you know, it's not balanced and if I do this it balances out the title and it makes them look a bit better it's generally for shorter bits of text it will only work if there's three or less lines of text for text wrap balance to come in and at this point it actually does have pretty good browser support now the next one I have is well, we're gonna match something similar but first I would suggest on like paragraphs list items fig captions anything that could be like text that you want to read is to set something like a max width in ch on it and what that does is it just prevents the line lengths from getting too long because even if you have everything in a container some areas you might get this where the text starts stretching across like that and it just becomes hard to read paragraphs when they're too long and your eye has to track too far and it can be hard to find the next point when you're coming back over and in typography it's just considered good practice to have max widths of in that range 65 you can go up to 70 and stuff it depends a little bit uh, so you know be your own judge but it's going to be roughly 65 characters wide if we do that and it just prevents them from getting too big if they're in an area where they could be larger uh, than that because some areas you know it's not going to cause any issues at smaller screens because it's a max width if you have you know a, a main area with a sidebar maybe you never hit that but then there'll be some times where it potentially could just come in and help you out and if you had a small font size a large font size it's always based on how many characters wide it is based on that font and that font size and everything so it's a nice little quick win there uh, but in that same vein that we saw here with this text wrap balance I would also suggest doing a text wrap here of pretty and you'll actually see a small little change here where it says the issue down at the bottom. Let's turn off this text wrap pretty and you'll see that it's only the word issue by itself. And that's called an orphan when you get a little word all in its lonesome down there, it's all lonely and it just creates these ugly things, then that's why they're called orphans. Uh, we don't want them in typography. So a text wrap pretty fixes that. Browser support for this is much worse than balance. Uh, it's only in Chromium browsers right now, but as browser support for this continues to grow, more and more people will just get the, the new and improved version of it. It's a very small difference, but you might as well put it on there because it doesn't hurt anything and makes things look slightly prettier. And the other thing I would suggest you do, and this is if you're using container queries, um, that it comes in handy, but I think container queries are gonna start becoming more and more common as we start seeing them out in the wild a little bit more, You know, as we understand more about them. Uh, and it would be doing something like this, where we're getting our header, our main, our footer. I guess main actually doesn't need to be <laughs> included right there. We could say main like this, because you only have one main per page. Um, but headers and footers, you could have them in different places. Maybe you want them to be containers, in which case you could just have these always, you know, we could you could even do this. It, de it depends a little bit on what you're doing and the use case you have. Uh, but to me, it makes sense to have all of these sort of landmarky areas as container types instead of having it on the viewport. Because the one problem with container queries is if you don't have a defined container, it just doesn't work. It doesn't fall back to being a media query, which in my opinion would have been kind of good. Uh, at one point I was playing around with just doing a body here to have sort of a default starting point for everything. And that kind of works, but I like this idea more because if my main is a bit narrower and I have a container query in there, I want it to act on that main. I don't want it to act like it's a media query. So having it set up like this, for me has really been a big improvement on using them. I don't have to define as many containers and it just works. And then in situations where I need something a bit more defined, then I have more defined things. And if you'd like to learn more about container queries and what the heck this even is and why they're super awesome, and I should include a comma here as well, uh, yeah, if you'd like to know more about them, there is a video right here for your viewing pleasure. And with that, I would like to thank my enablers of awesome, Andrew, Philip, Simon, and Tim, as well as all my other patrons and channel members for their support. If you'd also like to support the channel, you can do so. There are links down in the description or just join on YouTube. However that works, I still haven't really figured it all out, but I'm sure you can. But anyway, with all of that said and done, thank you very much for listening. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.